Sapoyan previously in Pokila 2020. Team Aktovich along with Team Aktazol had to eliminate someone amongst them as a penalty for losing the challenge. The results were unexpected, a tie between Fumiko with Chinta and DJ the Buizel. Now, what will happen between them? Take a deep breath and watch silently. Welcome to the tiebreaker room. You two are here because of what tie between the two of you. I'm actually surprised that the tie actually happened with an even number of subjects, but that's not important. What's important is this. Both of you are on the chopping block. One of you will be discarded. In worst case, both of you could be discarded. But there is a way for one of you to survive. The previous challenge is all about comics, right? Here is a deal for both of you. Make another comic with at least four panels. This time, the team is Pokemon 2020, and you are allowed to insert any character except for us game force. This time, I will be the sole judge of a tiebreaker. The one who submits the best comic will survive. The other one shall be discarded. If neither of you submit a comic, then both of you will fall to the chamber of discarded subjects. And now it's time for you to prove yourself! Now, for your judgment. Fumika, your comic was of low quality as usual, but you made a good plot out there. And as for DJ, is that how really comic panels were made? And if you could do something as simple as this, then why you didn't submit a comic during challenge? Not only that, you also based your comic on your personal relationships. Something that Fumika avoided doing. This, the loser of tiebreaker challenge is... DJ the Buizel. You are the next favorite subject. As for Fumiko, I have another good talk with you. Well, I can understand why I was voted out. I couldn't do the challenge because my terms were creeping up on me and the tiebreaker really hit the final nail in my coffin. I'm sorry for being a horrible teammate. And anyways, thanks for, for people who tried to save me. <sighs> Seriously! I knew it was blue team trying to get rid of a threat, but god damn it! I was helping and out of this challenge, only to get backstabbed. <sighs> By the skin of my teeth. This thing just started and already on the line. I understand why comments take so long to make now, but she's. So, I can't believe that there was a tie between Fumika and DJ, and that's surprising yet nice to hear. DJ is a floater, and Fumika is a major threat. Either way, a good thing is happening after the tiebreaker. What? I think that is a tie? That's preposterous. Fumika and DJ are going to have a tiebreaker challenge. Who will go to the chamber of other subjects, or who will stay? Let's find out. Good to watch stars indeed, even if you are in the underwater lab. As for how things go, I realized something. We must stay more close together before things get really bad, even if we are in different groups. That is why I got paired to the other three. As far as I know, things can be happy in this lab. And does Sandy SS giving me autograph now that he is here? Oh my gosh, we barked us old. We could've won this challenge had more than two of you done the challenge. Well, good luck at the elimination, everyone. Please let me live. I don't know if I can use these things for this. But I'm using this as a platform to send my message. About eliminated contestants. They should be able to talk in the chat visible to the players still in the game with their last words before being removed from chats.
Anyways, I almost won the challenge. As I was the last person to infect. What a shame. So fun with whoever this is. People are nice to me. And that's cool, I guess. Anyway, can anyone really tell me what this is? What's up, everyone? As I promised it to you before, your next challenge will take place in the Hypercube once again. And this time, each of the four groups will be on their own. For a while. Of course, it didn't escape my attention that group Achter which is two members short compared to other teams. At the same time, group Achterzold was also partially responsible for losing the challenge. So, after Tomika won the tiebreaker challenge, we asked her to transfer one of her group members to group Achterwish to balance out the teams. And the test subject that she chose to transfer was Savannah the Snivy. Thus, Snivy is now part of group Artowish. Please treat her well. And now it's time to announce your second Hypercube challenge. And the name of your next trial is Hazard Course. Your next test will take place in a separate section of a Hypercube, with 27 rooms in total. The maze will be three-dimensional, you can move in any available direction. And like I mentioned before, all four teams will be on their own. Before starting this challenge, each member of a team selects their starting room. During the challenge you can freely communicate with your group mates, even when you are in different rooms, but not with anyone else. You can either start in one single room, or spread your team members across different rooms. There will be some decoration items that you can claim inside the maze, just like in previous challenge, but no Pokemon Showdown battles will be required this time. Instead, your primary objective will be to survive this maze. Every 24 house, several of those rooms will start to become deadly, and every 24 house, you can move to an adjustment room in order to avoid those deadly traps. The entire challenge should last roughly about 7 days. In the first round, 5 rooms will turn deadly, 4 in second, and three subsequent rounds. Eventually, all 27 rooms will turn deadly, with no place to escape. Yet I clearly say that your objective is to survive. So how you would survive those deadly traps? Now listen closely. Each room will be eventually filled with a hazard that only certain Pokemon can survive. For example, let's just say one would room would turn deadly by completely floating it with water. In that case, Anyone who is not a water type would drown and be removed from the challenge. But the water type would survive. Once a room turns deadly, except for certain types, it will stay that way for the rest of the game. Which means, if you entered a deadly room and survived because it matched your type, you can consider yourself safe. That is why you should keep your team members spread out. There will be a contextual clue before the room you're in starts to turn deadly. If it mentions something like water, Relay that information to your team members, so that they can rush to that room before it gets too late. However, because you are also playing against other teams, you can either help them by giving them the same clue, or cheat them into entering the deadly room that doesn't match their type. The overall placement of teams depends on how many team members will sur have survived after the challenge ends. The bottom two teams will face elimination. Also, other things that you need to keep in mind. First, the code clue will be in this challenge as well. You just have to find it when you get the chance. Second, sometimes there will be cases when a passage to a room becomes locked out. They can be closed either manually in certain cases or randomly filled with hazards like water. Finally, as I previously said, most hazards will match a Pokemon type, sometimes even two, or depending on abilities like Levitate. But there will be also a certain hazard that will destroy you, no matter what elemental type you have. Take your utmost attention before heading off to a hazardous room. And that's our challenge in a nutshell. Spread your team across the maze, learn the cues, and use them to survive. I will officially announce when certain rules turn deadly, without revealing the type of a hazard. And of course, as well as announcing the name of the test subjects that perish during the challenge. One last thing to note. Each type of hazard cannot be repeated more than twice, with exception of extremely deadly hazard. Expect a water-based hazard to appear either twice or maybe even once. Same for hazards of other elemental types. 
What the hazards will start activation randomly? They will never be of the same type as the Pokemon that would be in the same room. Which means, if you are a water type, don't expect your room to be flooded with water on a whim. You need to move in order to survive. Expect sleepers like that Dracovish to be taken out in the early rounds of this game. Good luck, folks. You will certainly need it.